Well, a very good afternoon from a wet Phuket and the last few days have seen Phuket receive quite a bit in the way of rain so I haven't been able to get out and do my normal filming so instead today I thought I would bring you a couple of Thai recipes that both myself and my wife really enjoy and cook quite regular over here in Thailand. These recipes are quite simple and straightforward so you shouldn't have too much trouble reproducing them in your own kitchen. The first recipe we're going to be looking at is a pork short rib coconut and bamboo curry. Now the Thai name is a little bit difficult to pronounce, I will get my wife to pronounce it later on, um, but it's, it doesn't translate over into English very well so this is what I interpret it as being called. Now the second dish that we're going to be cooking today which is a sea bass steak which is deep fried and cooked with a fish sauce. Now there are a couple of ingredients that you may have to substitute for store bought rather than fresh because you simply can't get alt of them in your own country and the first ingredient is coconut milk. Now what my wife tends to do is buy actual fresh coconut down the market that is ground in a special way and from this she will Will make our own fresh coconut milk. Now we're going to show you the procedure and how to do this but of course you need to be able to get this type of coconut and it needs to be ground in this particular way to allow you to make the milk. Now if you can't get hold of it you can always substitute this for store-bought coconut milk in a carton. Now my wife will say of course fresh is always going to be better but not always you can get hold of the ingredients so easily as we can in Thailand. And the second ingredient you may I have to substitute is the bamboo. Again my wife buys the baby bamboo um, root uh, fresh and again we're going to show you how to prepare this and make this so that you can use this in the, the, the curry but again you may have to buy baby bamboo in a tin or pack it however it may come in your own country to allow you to make this particular curry. Now both of these recipes are quite easy to reproduce and they're going to give you a real taste and flavour for Thailand. Now before we make our way down the stairs and into the kitchen to do some cooking I just want to mention that the vegetarian festival is due to start towards the end of September this month. I believe this year it starts on the 29th of September and Shadow has just decided she wants to go off downstairs. Um, so yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so I believe the vegetarian festival this year starts on the 29th of September, runs through to the 7th stroke 8th of October and of course I will be covering this now. I did cover it last year, I did several videos on the vegetarian festival and I'll put the link at the top of the screen. But this year of course I'm going to be covering it but I want to cover it differently to how I covered it last year. I'm going to concentrate a lot more on the food aspect on one side of it but secondly I want to show you the scale of the vegetarian festival which I didn't do last year and the only way I can do that is with my drone because people don't understand just how big this festival is here in Thailand in fact I don't know to any other festival quite like the vegetarian festival that we have in Thailand it is something unbelievable it's definitely something to see at times it can be very dangerous again if you watch some of the videos that I've already done we'll highlight this but I'm, this year I've want to really cover it from the air, get some really fantastic phenomenal aerial shots. Um, I'm, so I'm going to be using my drone. Now I haven't been using my drone lately and there is a very good reason for this. Unfortunately for me, my drone now, the batteries that it takes are coming towards their end of their life and they're giving me a very very short flight time. So I need to replace the batteries but the manufacturer who makes my particular drone is no longer available in Thailand. They've pulled out of Thailand for whatever reasons which makes buying batteries for this drone very difficult. In fact I've tried and I can't get hold of any original batteries for my drone anywhere in Thailand. There's nobody that have got batteries, not new batteries for sale. I can order them from overseas but there are some issues with the sellers 
sending them or importing them into Thailand and it's making the batteries one very expensive and two very difficult to get hold of so the last few weeks I've been modifying my drone so it will now take standard LiPo battery that I can get hold of more easily in Thailand I'm towards the end of the modifications I'm just now waiting for the batteries to come and then hopefully my drone will be up and running again and I'm going to be able to bring you some phenomenal shots of the vegetarian festival so this is something to look out for towards the end of this month, beginning of October and uh, honestly I can't uh, explain just the, this festival, it's something to really see. If you're over here during the festival period, while the festival is taking place, then I highly recommend you go and check it out. But you do need to take some safety precautions because it can be very dangerous at times. So do go and check those videos out and see for yourself but it is phenomenal it's a crazy time um, unbelievable so from that we are now going to go downstairs into the kitchen and start to do some cooking now this is the pork short rib that we've pre-cooked earlier it's been boiled for about an hour in water nothing added to the water just plain normal water and boiled for about an hour until the rib is nice and soft now we have the ingredients for the pork short rib coconut and bamboo curry now the actual name of this curry does not translate over into english so this is uh, my sort of uh, interpretation of what what it's called because the thai name just won't translate over so what we've got is some pork short ribs which we've already pre-cooked which i've already showed you how to do then we've got some medium red curry paste that's medium red thai curry paste we've got some fresh bamboo and that's going to show us how to prepare this in a moment with this we've also got some kaffir lime leaves now we make it over here in thailand with fresh coconut because it's in abundance and it's very easy to get hold of and what this is basically been done is it's been ground down into what as you can see there like a pulp it almost looks like um, a desiccated coconut but it's not it's actually fresh coconut and we're going to make fresh coconut milk out of this and again that's going to show us how to do that in a moment but if you can't get hold of fresh coconut that's actually been milled and ground down we buy this from the market and it's very very cheap but it could be hard to get where you are in your country so you can replace this and i will give you the measurements shortly but first of all we need to make the fresh coconut milk and then we will measure it out now that's going to prepare the baby bamboo of course if you can't get fresh baby bamboo such as this we buy this from the market how much is this nat so uh, that piece there costs 50 baht obviously you can replace this with baby bamboo from a tin but it's not going to taste exactly the same because this is really fresh and the best way to make this sort of curry okay now now we'll start to prepare it so what we need to do is we need to clean up the ends you're going to need a colander with a bowl underneath of it and then it's just a case of now of course Nat has done this many times but if you're doing this for the first time and you've got bamboo piece like this then I would suggest you be very very careful with your fingers because as you can see you could very easily have an accident here so caution is required but what you need to do is cut it basically into very very fine strips if you're not confident doing this style then i would recommend maybe putting it onto a chopping board and slicing it very very finely as you can see there this is the correct thai way of preparing baby bamboo for a curry now I will weigh the ingredient, but the trouble over here, a lot of Thais, they do it by sort of eye. They've cooked it that many times, they just know the amounts, and it's very difficult. I tried to explain to my wife that over in 
Europe and other parts of the world, people work to precise measurements, but they, the Thai people don't tend to do that. They do a lot of testing as they're going along to make sure it tastes right, and if it's not quite right, they'll add a little bit more. So sometimes it's quite a difficult process to try and find out the exact weights. Often you can just make it to your own personal taste if you prefer more bamboo then you can always add more or less and again with a curry paste it's down to your own personal taste you can alter the taste and uh, make it so it's not quite as spicy okay as you can see Nat has now finished preparing all the bamboo and basically she chopped it all we're not going to be using all this amount in the curry she's prepared it for other dishes as well so what we're going to do now is cook the bamboo in a saucepan of boiling water so we've got a large saucepan half filled with water we'll wait for this to come to the boil and then we shall place the bamboo into the hot water and cook it for a roughly around 30 minutes and what this basically does it softens up the bamboo it also sweetens the bamboo and takes away any smell that the bamboo may have ready for the curry now to make the coconut milk from fresh coconut you're going to need hot one cup of hot water okay, okay. and also one cup of room temperature water And then what Nat does is she mixes the coconut through the water. But of course, if you haven't got access to this type of fresh coconut, then you can always use store-bought coconut milk. But Nat always says it doesn't taste as nice and it doesn't make the curry as good. So just bear that in mind. If you can get hold of fresh coconut milk, it is going to make the curry dish taste really, really good. Now of course this takes a little bit of time and you need to work the coconut around, squeeze it, squeezing all the water out of the coconut and then as you can see in the bottom of the bowl you are left with coconut milk. And that normally repeats this process, she'll strain it And this really is to get as much coconut milk as she can out of the coconut that she's purchased from the market. Now Nat's going to repeat the process exactly the same as before with one cup of warm water or hot water should I say. Mm -hmm. And then also one cup of room temperature water. And basically just repeat what she's done to get the maximum amount of coconut milk out of the coconut. Now of course if you're making a large amount this fresh coconut milk does not keep very long in the fridge so you need to use it up within two days. It's not the same as the store-bought coconut milk. Obviously some of the milks that you can buy from the store will last a little bit longer in the fridge so it may be easier if you're buying a large amount to buy the store-bought rather than make the fresh but just bear in mind the fresh is going to taste that much better. Now I've just asked Nat whether you can use the coconut rather than throwing it away and because you've made the milk out of it she's saying you can only really use it for a dessert, Thai dessert if you wanted to but of course she's not making a dessert and that's why she'll just guard it and throw it away. We're on to the next stage now the bamboo is now cooked now what Nat's done is taken the water that we cooked the short ribs in, which was just basically water, nothing added to the water. Short ribs cook for about an hour, so they're nice and tender and soft. We've taken that water, put that into a jug, and as you can see, there's just about 150 millilitres in there. We've got 80 grams of Thai red curry paste, so if you remember we did two lots of coconut milk we went through the first time which is this one here and then this is the milk that she made on the second time and the reason why she keeps it separate is the second milk is what we're going to initially cook the curry with and then she's going to add some of the milk from the first 
process that she put the coconut through which is a little bit more richer and thicker and she will add that later on in the cooking process to make the curry extra um, creamy and sweet so Nat's now going to strain the bamboo out you don't need the water that the bamboo has been cooking cooked in and then we're going to weigh out the amount that we need because she's not going to use all of this as I've said she's cooked it all basically so we've got it for some other recipes so we have 341 grams of bamboo so the first thing you want to do is put the coconut milk in the saucepan that was two cups 150 milliliters of the stock from the pork ribs put it onto a medium to high gas and get that nice and hot once you have the coconut milk and stock hot it doesn't have to be boiling you then add the 80 grams of red Thai curry paste mix that well in if you want spicy you can put extra more red curry okay so if you like your curry is very very hot you can add extra curry paste if you don't like the curry is too spicy then of course you can take a little bit of the curry paste out we normally eat it medium to hot, hot to be honest but of course if you don't like curries really spicy then you can always take some of the curry paste not put the amount 80 grams in put a little bit less and it won't be quite as spicy or hot yeah okay as you can see now the paste is almost dissolved into the milk and the stock we've now weighed out the second lot of coconut milk that's coming in Got, should I say it's going into the curry which is another two cups so if you're not using fresh coconut milk then of course you're going to need four cups of coconut store-bought coconut milk once the liquid starts to boil you then add your pork short ribs give those a good stir around and then wait for the then wait for it to come back to boil once it starts to slowly boil then you add in your pre-cooked bamboo then what you need to do is add one chicken stock cube just simmer it for roughly about five minutes so it gives a chance for the stock cube to dissolve once it's dissolved and the mixture is simmering you then add the coconut milk from the first process that Nat did so she's now adding the half coconut first. milk just putting half first mixing that in okay so we've got a small amount of salt that she's adding in again the trouble with the tires they tend to do it by eye and it's difficult to get the exact amount so you just need two small pinches I would say that was the equivalent of not too much salt and then obviously taste make sure you've got the flavor that you're happy with the flavor okay she's added now the remainder of the coconut milk Nat's cooked that now for about five minutes and she's not happy with the flavor of it so she's now adding another stock cube so that's two stock cubes in total okay I've just tried that and that's that's very nice I have to say very nice indeed a little bit spicy as I say we we do like it medium to hot and now after another five minutes of cooking Nat is now going to add lime leaves and you need to close the gas when you add these so this is now cooked the gas has been closed and just leave that now to stand and the curry is now finished okay so that's everything done on the pork short rib coconut and bamboo curry there's the finished curry you can serve it either with rice or a rice noodle in this case it's being served with a rice noodle 
and then of course the pork short rib bamboo and coconut curry For the fish sauce you are going to need 5 tablespoons of oyster sauce, 2 tablespoons of fish sauce and 2 tablespoons of sugar. This is normal granulated white sugar. Now for the dipping sauce we are going to need the juice from 1.5 limes which is this. We are going to need roughly 6-7 small chilies again you can adjust this if you don't like it too spicy but the Thais tend to say that if it's not spicy then it doesn't taste very nice there's also a one clove of garlic two tablespoons of fish sauce and two tablespoons of sugar so now the fish sauce and the sugar we won't be using all of that in the dipping sauce it's but mainly you're going to put enough to taste so it depends on your taste on the amount we're going to put in but I'm going to watch ploy and see how much she puts in as a guy you can ease off on the chili and you can ease off on the fish sauce the sugar is of course for sweetness okay now we're going to move on to making the actual sauce so we've put in the five tablespoons of oyster sauce into a saucepan next you need to add the fish sauce two tablespoons of fish sauce we've got the heat on a very very low heat so we're gonna heat the sauce very slowly next goes in the sugar which is two tablespoons of sugar it's made for sugar or so what you're looking for is the sugar to dissolve into the mixture. So you're just heating it enough to dissolve the sugar. Okay. Okay. Now that the sauce is now finished, the sugar is completely dissolved. You don't need to cook it too long, just until the sugar is dissolved. And then that's ready now to be added to the fish once the fish has been cooked. Now we're going to make the dipping sauce and this consists of the juice from one and a half limes. There's roughly six, seven chilies here in a dish that are going to be pounded up in the pedestal mortar. And there's also a clove of garlic. And to this we're also going to add a small amount of fish sauce and sugar. Now the Thai people tend to do this by taste. I'm going to try and tell you roughly how much ploy is adding into it. So you get more of a guideline. So you know when you come to make it what you should be adding. But again as I've said Thai people tend to do it to taste rather than to measurements. So in goes the chilies first with the clove of garlic. And that is beaten down into a pulp and this is going to take quite a few minutes now of course if you haven't got a pedestal and mortar you could use a food processor to do this now this is the sort of consistency you're looking for ploy is now stopped and she's okay. going to add some sugar now which is i would say looking at the amount that she's putting in there is about half a tablespoon two teaspoons something like that again as I've explained the ties do it all to taste so it's difficult to get measurements I keep saying to my wife if I'm going to do recipes I need measurements not just a bit of this and a bit of that because it doesn't work okay so there's roughly half a tablespoon of fish sauce another one so about a tablespoon of fish sauce so now Ploy is now mixing that into almost like a paste really She's now going to add the juice of the limes. That's one and a half. The juice from one and a half limes. Gradually adding it in. And again, I think what she's going to do now is taste it to see whether it tastes about right. Good. She's thinking about it. <laughs> she's thinking about it. Hot, spicy, yeah? Huh? Yeah, I think that's spicy. More fish sauce needed. Okay, Nat's decided to add some more sugar because it's obviously very spicy. Yes? 
ploy is nodding her head <laughs> and saying it's very spicy so again you can adjust this recipe to your own personal taste if you don't like your food over spicy then reduce the amount of chilies that you're putting in there you can add more sugar and more fish sauce to make it a little bit more sweeter and sour and then that's going to try more lime okay so we've now nearly used all the juice from the one and a half limes to make this sauce yeah and that's stirring it and making the sugar dissolve to sweeten it up a little bit Okay, let me try. Let's see what this tastes like. Okay, this could be quite spicy. Actually, that's quite nice. Yeah, that's that's good. That is that's that's not too spicy. I can feel it in the back of my throat now. I'm just getting the feeling for the spiciness on the back of my throat, but that's that's quite nice. It's got a little sweet overtone to it as well. So that is the dipping sauce all done. One of the things that you have to bear in mind with the Thais, a lot of the recipes that the Thai people do, is all about sort of tasting it themselves they don't really work to measurements and this is one of the things that you're going to find when you dine at a restaurant now you may dine at one restaurant and order a particular dish and enjoy the flavor and the taste then go to a different restaurant later in your stay order the same dish but it tastes totally different and the reason for that is there aren't really set recipes for a lot of the Thai dishes now of course the professional chefs will of course measure out the ingredients so they can re-repeat uh, the dish exactly the same but a lot of the local Thai people that do the food and that was taught by her mother they don't work on measurements they just do it to taste and by eye and this is something very difficult when you're trying to do a recipe and I say to my wife well how much are you putting in and she'll just say well a little bit and I say well what's a little bit you know my little bit may be different to Nat's little bit and so on now of course this is one of the reasons why you really need to taste it as you're making it to find out the flavors and see where it, you go because obviously if you add too much sugar you can't take it away once it's add, added so you really need to taste it and add the ingredients gradually to get it to your own personal taste and this is what a lot of the time people do and this is why some of the recipes or some of the dishes will taste very different from restaurant to restaurant now to go along with the sea bass my wife's going to cook some cabbage up so you can you can have this or you don't have to have it but what we tend to do is put this cabbage underneath the sea bass once it's cooked as you will see once it's finished so you're going to need some half a cabbage i think there's a half a cabbage there is that right Nat? about a half a cabbage half a small cabbage and she's basically going to fry it in a wok okay Okay, we're adding a little bit of fish sauce as you saw there again no measurements it's more about eye so again it's something you need to put in and then see if you you have enough flavor there for you or you can always add more that's it so it's literally frying it for about one or two minutes at most with a little bit of fish sauce i would say the amount that she put in was about one tablespoon roughly okay that's the cabbage cooked it only takes a literally a few minutes so it's just cabbage fried with some fish sauce the amount is roughly a tablespoon of fish sauce but again you need to taste it and adjust it to your own personal taste and this is where the sea bass will sit on top 
My wife tells me this is optional. If you don't want to have the cabbage, you don't need to have it. Okay, now Nat's going to cook the sea bass. Now these are the two sea bass steaks that we bought from the market this morning. Get the wok nice and hot, a little bit of oil in there just to start with while she's warming it up. Now she's going to pour a lot more oil, this oil that we tend to keep just for fish as a separate oil. So you, you really need quite a decent amount in the bottom of the pan in the wok so that you can deep fry the fish. Okay, now that's going to put some salt in the oil and what this actually does is makes the fish stay under the oil rather than floating to the top. And I'm going to move back because I've seen this being cooked previous on previous occasions and it spits and splatters everywhere so you do need the oil very hot. So we've got the flame set quite high as you can see. Okay now this is the short pork rib coconut and bamboo curry that we cooked earlier. We're just now warming it back up ready to have with the fish. It's on on a very low light. It's been standing about five hours during the day which we cooked this morning and now we are going to cook the sea bass. So once the oil's nice and hot Place the two steaks or one steak, whichever, whatever amount you're doing, it doesn't really matter. That's now going to put the lid on. Okay. Now, Nat is going to tell me the name in Thai of the pork short rib curry because it's a name that I can't pronounce, it's quite difficult. So, come on, Nat, what's, what's this curry called? Say again, just one more time. Now that's why I couldn't pronounce it. It's a little bit of a mouthful. I'm not the greatest with the Thai language. So that one is, uh, that's exactly what that pork curry is um, in Thai. It doesn't translate the name of the curry over into English very well. In fact, when you put it through any translation program, it doesn't make any sense basically uh, what comes out. So my sort of take on it, my translation is a pork short rib coconut curry with baby bamboo. And we're using a red Thai curry paste in the curry. Now Nat's also going to tell us the name of the um, sea bass dish in Thai. So what's the name of the sea bass dish please in Thai? No? Fish? Yes, please. Okay, so yeah, what Nat said there is <laughs> is the name of that uh, sea bass, which is basically sea bass steaks with a fish sauce. Now these are going to take quite a while to cook. Now Nat says she normally cooks them for about 15 minutes, but again. Depending on how you like your fish, we, we like this well cooked, as you will see, because that's the way the Thai people eat it. You may decide that you don't want to cook it quite as much. Personally, this is the way I like it, and this is the way the Thai people cook it. You're going to cook the sea bass for about 15 minutes. Now, of course, you need to turn these over halfway through the cooking process. So at about six to seven minutes, turn the fish over so you get them nicely cooked on both sides. After roughly 15 minutes that's what it should look like. Now you can cook it a little bit longer as I say if you want it really crispy or if you want it a little bit softer you can adjust the time that you cook the fish for. So cook it for maybe 12 or 14 minutes if you prefer but this is how we like to cook it. And then those steaks will be placed on the top of the cabbage. Oh, 
hotter. <laughs> Just like so, and then the sauce is poured over the top. And this is just delicious. Now anybody that knows my channel or watches it regular will know and that I'm not a big fan of fish. In fact, I very rarely eat fish and this is one of the few fishes that I do actually eat because this is just delicious. It doesn't have a really strong fishy flavor and I think that's what I like about it. And it's just delicious. So, and that's coming from somebody that's not particularly a big fan of fish. Nat really enjoys this plate of food and whenever we go out she normally orders this dish if they have it on the menu because she really likes it. Okay well there you have it as a two steaks of sea bass which have been deep fried on a bed of cabbage with fish sauce and there is also a chili dipping sauce to go along with it making me feel very hungry now i'm just waiting for nat to dish up the pork short rib curry and there is the pork short rib coconut curry with baby bamboo it looks really nice and now this can be served with either rice noodles or if you prefer just rice Okay, Ploy has decided to have the rice noodles with hers. I'm having mine with rice. Nat's also having rice as well. Okay, well now, I'm sorry, but it's time to eat and enjoy. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and if so, please remember to give it a thumbs up and also share it on social media, as it really helps the channel. I'd like to take a moment to thank everybody who's subscribed to my channel. It's very much appreciated. And if you haven't already subscribed and you want to know more about Phuket and Thailand in general, then please do consider subscribing. Well, from me, Tony, thanks for watching the video. And until next time, I will catch you on the next one.